Hello everyone, good afternoon. So again, welcome to our subject. And for today, we are about to discuss adjusting entries, the introduction, and the accruals. So this is your instructor, Noel Bergogna. So just sit back, relax, take down notes. And if you do have questions, please let me know on our respective chat boxes or you can comment on this particular video. Okay? So... I think we can start now, no? So before we start proper with the uh, adjusting entries, no? So let's just have a short recap. So in our discussion of module number two, we have actually discussed what we so-called um, analyzing business transactions. So we analyze whatever are the um, events that occurs in a particular source document, diba, which supports a business transaction. And it will be either an increase or a decrease in any of the elements in the financial statement. Then we have in module number three, no, diniscuss natin yung all about journalizing. Formally, the business transaction being analyzed. So after we journalized, we post it to the ledger. And then afterwards, no, pagkatapos po ng journalizing and posting all of the transactions during the month, okay, we have prepared the trial balance. Okay, so after the preparation of trial balance, eventually, no, um, yung kasunod na step nun would be um, discussed in our module number five. But we are just uh, putting here module number four, adjusting entries, no, to introduce to you, okay, uh, about the adjusting entries, which we will be using in our module number five. Okay, so let's now start now with the discussion of adjusting entries. Okay, so um, adjusting entries are typically based on the concept of accrual basis of accounting. So let's just have a recap of what accrual basis of accounting is. So it is where no, um, an entity in accordance with the International Accounting Standard Number 1, paragraph number 27, okay, the entities shall prepare its financial statements. So as you all know, the financial statements are the output of our accounting process, okay, except for the cash flow information using the accrual basis. So all of the financial statements except the statement of cash flow, which uses the cash basis of accounting, no, which also we'll be discussing thoroughly pagdating ninyo ng FABM part 2, okay, uh, are to be prepared in accordance with accrual basis. And ano nga ulit tong accrual basis na to? So in accordance with the conceptual framework for financial reporting 2018 paragraph 1.17, the accrual accounting or the accrual basis of accounting depicts the effect of transactions and other events and circumstances on the reporting entity's economic resource and claims in the periods in which those effects occurs. So kung kailan po nag-occur, no, as we have mentioned it in module number one, no, accrual basis will record anything no, once it occurs. Okay? Even if the resulting cash receipts and payments occurs in the different period. Okay? So based also in our discussion previously, no, um, in accrual basis of accounting, since we are talking about the occurrence, our income will be recognized or will be recorded once it is earned. Okay? At pag sinabi nating earned, the goods have been delivered already or the services have been performed. And take note, regardless when the cash is received. So we are not looking into the cash receipts no, to recognize or to record our revenue or income. But rather, it will be recorded once we have earned it. On the other hand naman, no, with regards to expenditures, so uh, it is also stated in the accrual basis of accounting that we will recognize expenses okay, once they are incurred. Pag sinabi natin incurred, it should have been used or expired and take note, regardless when the cash is paid. So again, in accrual basis, we are not looking into when will the cash be paid, but rather, kailan ba ito nagamit? or nag-expired, okay? And after that, no, we need to record the expenses related to it. Okay, so that's how accrual basis accounting works and actually based din doon sa ating naging discussion in analyzing at saka journalizing ng business transactions, we have already recorded based on the concept of accrual basis of accounting. Okay? And ayun nga po, um, because there is an accrual basis in accounting which we need to follow in preparing our financial statement, no? that's why 
we are going to have our adjusting entries as a result of this accrual basis of accounting. So ngayon po, dumako na tayo formally sa ating adjusting entries. So what are adjusting entries? And how is it different from the journal entries that we have prepared previously? Okay, so to give you an idea, no? an adjusting entry are entries prepared at the end of the accounting period. Okay, so take note of the um, date when it should be recorded. It should be recorded at the end of the accounting period. So remember class no, that we have discussed in module 3 about journalizing are all recorded during the month or during the accounting period. So um, it could be dated, uh, let's say, January 1, January 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. No? So it was dated based on the source document. Now... Okay, so we have the adjusting entries which are only prepared class no, at the end of the accounting period. So pag hindi siya uh, prepared or dated on the end of the accounting period, they are not adjusting entries. And what's the purpose of this adjusting entry? Bakit kailangan natin siyang i-record at the end of the accounting period? It is for updating or adjusting the balance of our accounts. Okay, so kung naalala ninyo, di ba, we have prepared our trial balance. And in the trial balance, diba, we have already the um, balances of our um, assets, liabilities, capital, your income, at saka expenses. Diba? It arranged um, based on this sequence. Now, those balances are typically the balances out of the transactions during the month. But somehow, no, it's either pwedeng meron pa tayong hindi na record no, in these uh, balances or baka may na-record tayo, but they need to be updated. Okay, so that's uh, how we look into it. No, May balance na hindi pa na-record, or may transaction na hindi pa na-record, kasi it may be it just occurred at the end of the reporting period, and then um, hindi siya napasama doon sa ating usual transactions recorded, or it occurs after na no ating reporting period, pero related pala siya doon sa period na ginagawa natin, or even may naka-record na, nandun na sa trial balance, but we need only to update those balances. Okay? So kaya nga ang tawag actually sa trial balance ay unadjusted balances. Meaning, they are not yet adjusted. Kaya nandyan sa adjusting entry is to make sure that those unadjusted balances are updated or adjusted. Okay, so I hope that that is clear. Ha? It is dated at the end of the accounting period and the purpose is to update or to adjust the balances. Okay, so in addition no, uh, to this, adjusting entries assigns income in the period in which they have been earned. Okay, so di ba meron tayong dinescuss in module number one about matching principle. So in matching principle, we should recognize the expense related to the income recognized during the period. So with regards to income, supposed to be whatever have been earned during the period, it should be recorded as income. Moreover, if this is incurred during the period, it should have been recorded as an expense. Okay, so in addition to the purpose of updating and adjusting the balances, no, adjusting entries are needed to, number one, measure properly the period's income and expenses. We don't want to understate or even overstate our income or expenses. That's why we need to adjust it to make sure that our balances are correct. Moreover, adjusting entries no, are used to bring the related assets and liability accounts to correct balances for the financial statement. So um, again, no, going back to the initial definition, it is used to adjust okay, or update the balances of our assets or even the liabilities as well as the income and expenses. Okay, so I hope that that is clear. No? And finally, for this slide, please make sure that you understand that adjusting entries are prepared at the end of the reporting period and they should be dated as of the last day of the month. So kung last day of the month nung ginagawa natin is 31, let's say December, so dapat ang adjusting entries are dated December 31. Okay, so if it is, let's say, February, kung hindi naman leap year, then it should be dated February 28. 
So pag leap year yung taon na uh, na covered nung ating um pre prepare na financial statement, then it should be dated on the 29th. Okay? At saka yung mga months which has 30, then it should be 30. So please make sure that you understand ha, the date or the end of the month natin. Okay? So the adjusting entries will contain no, um, at least one real account. Okay? So pag sinabi nating real account, this refers to the asset, liabilities, and capital. Pero take note class, ha, um hindi natin ilalagay ang capital account kapag adjusting entry. So, we will encounter at least the adjusting entry will have one real account which is either an asset or liability and then one at least one nominal account. So, yung nominal accounts, these are also known as our temporary accounts. Okay? Temporary. Samantalang yung real account naman, these are known as the permanent accounts. Okay, so ayun ha, yung nominal accounts po natin, these are actually referring doon sa ating um, income, expenses, at saka drawing account. But unfortunately, pag adjusting entries po ang pinag-uusapan, we will not have any drawing account. So we will encounter at least an income or expense account. So again ha, ulitin ko lang po, we will encounter adjusting entries no, and it will contain either um, one or more nominal account at saka one or more real account depending upon the set of entries. Pero ayun, at least one real and one nominal accounts. Okay? So pag hindi siya nagko-contain ng one real or one nominal, it is not considered as an adjusting entry. I-add ko lang din pala, no? you cannot see in the adjusting entry the account title cash. Never ever pong mag appear dito sa i-discuss natin ha na adjusting entries yung cash account. Okay? So I hope that that is clear ha. So that's all about the adjusting entries. Now let me introduce to you the different types of adjusting entries which we will be discussing here in this video lecture and also the subsequent video lectures. So we have the accrued expenses and accrued income or revenue. So ito kasama dito sa ating video lecture na to. Then we have prepaid expenses and earned revenues no, which are known as well as deferrals. Okay? Uh, yung uh, accrued expense and accrued income or revenues, these are known as accruals. Kaya yung sa title ng ating introduction kanina, accruals, because we will be discussing this too. Then we have depreciation. Okay, separate video lecture din yan. We have also the bad debts, uncollectible or doubtful accounts. So this is referring to the impairment of receivables. No, This is the possibility na hindi makolekta yung pinautang natin. And then pagdating natin ng merchandising business in the future, no, ito po ay mag appear the merchandise inventory adjusting entry. Okay? So yan po yung mga abangan natin sa mga susunod na video lectures po natin. Okay? So let's start now with our first type of adjusting entry, okay, which is the accrued expenses. Okay, so from the word itself, accrued, uh, most likely it means that it was already been used. No? And then expense, no? um, used, and then hindi pa nababayaran. I mean, not yet paid pag accrued, or there is no um, outflow or inflow yet. Tapos dahil expense, then it might have been used already. So define natin formally, ano ba tong accrued expenses? So accrued expenses are expenses. Again, pag sinabi natin expenses, it's either incurred, no? at pag sinabi natin incurred, it should have been used or nag-expired na. Diba? So nagamit na natin, and then bought they are not yet paid at the end of the fiscal period or calendar period or whatever accounting period it is. Okay? So, nagamit na pero hindi pa bayad. Di ba maraming ganyan, no? That we have encountered already formally nung tayo nag-journalize ng transactions in module number 3. Di ba? So, yung utilities, for example, pag ginamit natin utilities, binigyan tayo ng bill, hindi pa natin nababayaran, then that is already considered an accrued expense. Okay? Ganon din yung salaries ng employee. Pag nagamit natin yung services ng employee pero hindi pa natin bayad, then that is considered as an accrued expense. So these accrued expenses are also referred to as accrued liability or accrued 
payable. So, pare-parehas lang po sila. No? Uh, since in the definition, no, as you can see, my expense. So, ibig sabihin na gamit na. So, we will be recording an expense. And then, dahil hindi pa siya bayad, there is a payable. So, as to the proforma entry, kapag may accrued expense, okay, kailangan mong, ano, ha, kailangan mong intindihin, nasang perspective ka, dapat ikaw yung gumamit. Sabihin mo sa sarili mo, user ka pala. <laughs> Joke lang. No? Pero ayun, um, you should be the party who have used or who have that particular um, item no? expired. Okay? Nagamit or nag-expired. Okay? But not yet paid. So pag nagamit na or, or expired, there should have been an expense. Kaya may makikita kayong debit to expense. And then dahil not yet paid, then it will become a payable. So this is the performa entry. Every time that we have accrued expenses, we just simply debit the expense account and credit payable account. Now, papalitan na lang natin siya with the title that is specifically used for the transaction. It could be salaries, interest, okay, rent, or the likes. Okay? So as you can see here in the performa entry, no, um, sabi natin kanina, adjusting entries are the entries which contains one nominal. Okay? Ano yung nominal dito? Okay? Or temporary. So, this is the expense. Okay? So, yan yung nominal natin. And then, um, we have one permanent or real account. Alin dito yon? The payable is considered as the real account. So, this is an adjusting entry. Although, class ha, pag na-record ito within the reporting period, kagaya nung ginawa natin sa module 3, pag na-record siya, na-isama siya sa trial balance, hindi po siya considered as adjusting entries. So, this accrued expenses happens only once we have used something, hindi pa na-record doon sa ating financial um, reports or hindi pa siya na-record doon sa journal, even hindi rin siya na-isama sa preparation and trial balance, but we have um, to make sure that it is recorded at the end of the reporting period since it is related to our um, our uh, particular na, ano, na period. Okay? So I hope that that is clear. No? Again, if you do have questions, please let me know on our respective chat boxes. So I have prepared no, various examples para at least ma-appreciate ninyo how to record the accrued expense. Okay, so let's start with the first example, no? which is about accrued salaries. Okay, so accrued salaries happened when we have already used the services of our employees, pero at the end of the reporting period, hindi pa siya bayad. The question is, sir, bakit hindi pa siya bayad? Hindi ba dapat bayad na siya kasi kinsenas katapusan ng bayad? Actually, it depends upon no? how the company pays or how is the policy of the company no? in terms of payment of the employee salary. Sure naman na nagbabayad, yeah? but the question is when. Okay, so in this case, no, I have just uh, prepared um, an example here. No? And as you can see, March for the March month ito. So let's assume that Euphoria Barbershop pays its employee every Friday for the five-day work week. So meron pong limang araw, kada linggo, nagtatrabaho yung employees. Then they pay every Friday. So tignan natin itong March. So let's say for uh, March 1 up to March 5, which is a five-day work week, nabayaran ng empleyado no March 5. Same with the week of 8 up to 12, bayad na si employee ng 12. Sir, anong entry nung nagbayad? Most likely, ang entry natin is debit salaries expense. Di ba? Yan yung typical na ginagawa natin before in journalizing sa module 3 and credit cash. Kasi bayad na. Okay? Same then with the week 15 up to 19 and then week 22 up to 26. Lahat ng yun, no, bayad na during the month of March. Unfortunately, with the last week of March or the last few days of March from the 29th, it will just be paid kailan? Ayun, April to na to halos. Okay? So, April to ma magbabayaran. So, are we going to record it on April 2 kung kailan lang tayo magbayad? ba? Hindi. Bakit? Kasi we are in a cruel basis of accounting. We should record even if it is not yet paid. Okay, because we have already used the services of our employees. So dito sa ating example na to, no, um, the company pays 4000 for the two employees every Friday. 
for the two employees na yun, ha? For fr every Friday. So, pagdating ng April, ang gagawin na lang natin is payment ng 4,000. But, since we are going to report, assuming that the company reports every month, okay? So, gagawa siya ng report ng March. Nakarecord na yung mga bayad. Okay, kasama sa trial balance. Pero itong related sa March 29 to 31, hindi pa. So since it was not yet recorded, hindi kasama sa trial balance, but we have already used the services of the employees, then we need to record it. Uh, kung makikita ninyo, ha, tayo si Euphoria Barbershop. Tayo yung gumamit ng services ng employees. So we have expense. And then, hindi pa tayo bayad, di ba? Kasi we, we need to pay on April. So that means we have a payable. So ayun, dun natin nakuha na, hey, that is considered as an accrued expense related to the accrued salaries. Okay, so ilang araw nga? Tatlong araw na hindi pa tayo nakapagbayad. So we need to accrue. So on March 31, which should be the date, of our adjusting entry kasi di ba adjusting entries are prepared at the end of the reporting period so ang entry po natin is debit salaries expense 2400 and credit salaries payable 2400 so saan nang galing yung 2400 4000 yung para sa limang araw natin babayaran di ba kaso tatlong araw pa lang naman yung nagagamit natin during march na hindi pa bayad over the 5 so that is equal to 2,400. Okay? So, I hope that that is clear. Utang natin yon as of March 31 na mababayaran pa natin pagdating ng April. Okay? So, this is our adjusting entry. We have the nominal account which is the salaries expense. Then, we have the real account which is your liabilities na salaries payable. Okay? So, hindi ba pwedeng cash? Hindi nga. Kasi, we are going to pay pa on April 2, which is the Friday. Okay? Ano pa? Um, sir, um, just in case, no, na magbayad sa April 4, ano po ba yung magiging entry niya? Okay. So, pagdating ng April 4, if you want to know what will be the end, uh, April 2 rather, ano kaya yung entry niya? So, hindi na po yung adjusting entry ha kasi ang adjusting entry is dated at the end of the reporting period. Pero ano po yung entry pag nagbayad na ng April 2? So, ang entry na natin will be una, debit your salaries payable. Ang utang natin as of March 31 is 2,400. So, yun muna yung unang babayaran, 2,400. Tapos, di ba may nagamit din tayo on April 1 at saka 2. So, ang mangyayari, that will be a debit to salaries expense. Okay, magkano yun? Dalawang araw lang yun, so that would be around 1,600. So, paano 1,600? That is 4,000 times 2 days kasi April 1 at 2, yun yung nagamit during April, all over 5. Okay, kaya naging 1,600. And then we credit our cash kasi magbabayad tayo doon no, ng amounting to 4,000. So, hindi na po yan adjusting entries kasi una sa lahat, may credit to cash. And that is the payment. So, see, no? Based on our adjusting entry, no? We do not look into the date when we're going to pay it. Ang date ng bayaran was April. So, hindi po tayo nakapagbayad pa as of the end of the reporting period. That's why we need to adjust for the accrued salaries. Okay? So, are we clear on that class? Any questions or clarifications, just please let me know on our respective chat boxes. Ang ma, um, papayo ko lang sa inyo, no? make sure na bilangin ninyo maigi. Kasi minsan, no, kahit alam ng student na salaries expense or sal wage, uh, salaries payable, yung uh, journal entry, minsan nagkakamali sila dahil dun sa bilang. At remember, ang i-adjust natin is kung ilan po yung hindi pa nababayaran, pero we have already used the services. Okay? So, are we clear on that? Sir, um, may nakita akong account title na wages. Similar din pa dun sa word na salaries. Yes, class. No? So, if you've seen uh, the word wages, kung wala yung salaries, then you can use that as well. Okay? Because wages and salaries are synonymous to each other. Okay? So, are we good on that? So, that's our example number one. So let us continue on our next example. So we're done with salaries. Ngayon naman po about interests. 
Okay? So, di ba narinig niyo interest? Pag nangutang tayo, merong tumatakbong interest. Okay? So, let's apply that, no? Kasi somehow and sometimes, no? interests are not yet paid immediately. No? So it will wait some certain period of time before it will be paid. Minsan kasama na siya nung full payment nung uh, pinakautang natin. Okay, so let's find out how do we account for accrued interests or unpaid interests but we have already incurred them. Okay, so the company has an outstanding 180-day Okay, so 180 days. So, ibig sabihin that particular liability will be paid 180 date from uh, 180 days from the date of uh, the utang. Okay, 12%. So, this is considered as an interest rate. So, interest rate po ang tawag natin dyan. Okay, yung, yung patubuan na interest. Then, note payable. Ayun, kaya pala may interest kasi nangutang tayo by issuing a promissory note. Kaya may notes payable. Remember class, ha, tayo ay nasa perspective ng borrower or yung nangutang. Okay? So, are we clear on that? Okay. Dated October 2, 2021. So, ito yung date ng ating promissory note. no? It was issued on October 2, 2021. So, ang pagtakbo ng interest is a day after. Okay? Amounting to 200,000. So, itong 200,000, ang tawag natin dyan, yan yung principal na utang. Okay? Yan yung principal na utang na kailangan nating bayaran. Now, the interest is payable upon maturity of the note. So, ayun nga yung sinasabi ko, no? The interest will be paid upon maturity. Eh, kailan ba magmamature itong promissory note natin? Ang sabi, up to 180 days. Okay? So, pag nagbayad na tayo ng kabuuan na 200,000, idadamay na rin natin yung bayad ng ating interests. Okay, ganun naman talaga kasi pag nangungutang, di ba, may interests. Now, the company's accounting period or calendar year is every January 1 to December 31. So, it is a calendar year, no? Calendar year kasi it starts in January and then December 31 ang dulo. Now, the adjusting entry to record the interest on the note on December 31, 2021 is, so, from October 2, okay, so, kung titignan natin, October, ilan bang months yung 180 days? So that is 30 days assumed per month. So 6 months, di ba? Halos 6 months yan. Then kung October yan, October, November, December, January, February, March. So most likely, March next year pa mababayaran 2022. Okay? So March pa din mababayaran yung kabuuan ng interests. Okay? So what will happen no? on December 31, which is the end of the reporting period for the company, we need to adjust for the interests na na-incur na natin during the 2021. So from October 2 up to December 31. Okay? Now, ang question is, sir, gagawin ba natin monthly? So since we are basing it on days, no? kasi 180 days, so we will be using the daily computation of interests. So simple interest lang naman to, no? So what will be the computation? So bilangin natin kung ilang days po yung nakalipas. So actually, for October, the counting will start on October 3, ha? Hindi nyo isasama si October 2. So October 3 na tayo, and then you count it up to uh, October 31 siya. So pag binilang nyo in October, there are 29 days na nakalipas. Okay, so again ha, pag binilang ninyo, it depends upon the end date. Okay, at saka kung kailan nagsimula, a day after ka magsimulang magbilang. Okay, so 29 days in October, so you can pause for a while and then count for the number of days. And then for the month of November, di ba, up to 30 days yung November, so 30 days po yung um, natapos during the month of November. And then in December, it is up to 31. So in totality, no, in totality um, our interests for 2021 ay tumakbo ng 90 days. So ibig sabihin, once we compute for our accrued interest, it will be 90 days. Sir, so over what? 180? Hindi. No? Yung 180 is the maturity date. Pero kasi class, itong interest na binibigay sa atin, yung lahat ng interest rate na, inuot, na binibigay sa atin sa problem, no, is also in reality, no, this is usually annually. Sir, so, ano po yung annually? Annually or yearly or pang isang taon. Unless sabihin sa problem na this is good for uh, three months, this is good for um, six months, okay, or good for ganitong um, months or year, no? 
pero pag naging silent, so hindi ba 180 days? Hindi. At ang basa kasi nito, 180 days, that's the maturity date, tapos 12% yung note payable. So that 12% is not indicated na pang 180 days lang. No? It is silent, thus we will assume that it is considered as annually or good for one year. Okay? So kung pang one year yan, tapos 90 days lang ang nagamit natin, hindi ba mali pag dinivide natin by 180? So ang gagamitin po natin dahil wala nakalagay no ilang days ba sa isang taon yun yung kailangan natin pag naka-daily. Ilang days ba sa isang taon? Okay, there are two concepts, no? It could be 365, 'di ba, pag hindi leap year or 366 pag leap year. Pero if the problem is silent here in our computation, we will be using what we so called banker's rule. Okay? Ano po ba tong banker's rule na to? The banker's rule states that, okay, kaya siya naging banker's rule class ha, kasi ito yung typical na ginagamit sa bank and financial institutions na if um, it would be computed on a daily basis, no, our total days would be 360 days. That's the banker's rule. And the assumption of the banker's rule is 30 days yung ating interests or 30 days yung pang isang taon. Sir, paano mag-compute ng interest using the banker's rule? So, ang ang interest po natin in terms of days, ilang days po yun, or proportion, would be equal to the number of actual days. Kagaya ng ginawa natin dito, di ba? binilang natin kung ilan yung actual days. Okay? Sir, kahit may 31, sabi mo kanina, ang banker's rule assumed to be 30 per um per month yes no kahit may 31 isasama natin kasi it will be based on the actual days all over the 360 okay pag banker's rule pag hindi naman banker's rule let's say 365 yung nakalagay sa problem then ang denominator natin is 365 okay so that's how we compute the interest i have also uh, shown the formula in uh, our uh, module no the principal times rate times time. At yung time natin is the actual days over 360 if it is referring to daily. Okay? So to show you paano kinompute itong sa problem na to, no? so I hope sinusulat nyo itong mga pinagsasabi ko dito ha, 360 kapag silent yung problem or walang sinabi, pero pag sinabing 365, then use 365. Pag sinabing 366 kasi leaf year, then you can do so. Okay, so for the accrued interests of the company from October two up to December thirty one, it will be amounting to six thousand pesos. So sa nakuha yon, yung two hundred na principal natin times the annual interest rate na twelve percent, then times your ninety, which is computed kanina na actual number of days all over the three sixty. Again, we use the three sixty because um we are um going to have No, a silent problem. Okay, so six thousand peso. So our entry would be on December thirty-one debit interest expense because we got on time of incurred interest during the year. No, good for ninety days long, and credit interest payable six thousand. Interest payable because again, hindi pa bayad. Okay, so are we clear on that? So that's how we compute the interest. So in typical entry, parin natin no one nominal. So that's the interest expense, and then we have the real, which is your interest payable. So see the partner no expense is payable. Okay, so six thousand pesos. So again, if you do have questions, please let me know on our respective chat boxes. Okay. So that's our example number two. Another example about accrued interest no para talagang fully ma-understood ninyo. Ito 180 days no. So naka-daily tayo. Now what if it is um 180 days pero um sinabi sa problem na 365. So similar approach din siya with example number 2 no. We count based on the number of days actual no. So that's actually 90 days, di ba? From October 2 up to December 31, 90 days. Since binigay yung 365, hindi naging silent. So kung silent ulit, bankers rule 360 tayo. Ngayon, gagamitin natin 365. Okay? So that would be, if we compute it, uh, 200,000 times 12% times 90 days over 365. Kasi yun yung binigay sa atin na assumption during um, 
a particular year, not 365 days. So that would be equal to an interest expense of 5,917.81. So on December 31 ulit, our entry would be um, debit interest expense 5,917.81 and credit interest payable, 5,917.81. So, ingat kayo dun sa mga uh, data sa problem ha. Tignan ninyo maigi kung 360 or 365. Ilang araw no, yung pagbibila ang class. No? I hope that you can do it properly yung counting of days. Okay? So, because it will affect our uh, amount in the journal entry. So, that's our example number three no? about accrued interest no? with um, 365 days. Sir, tanong ko nga ulit, bakit hindi po 180 yung ginamit natin? 180 days is just referring to the maturity date. Okay? Kung gaano katagal natin bago mabayaran. Kaya natin ginagamit yung 360 or 365, it's because the interest rate given to us here in the problem example is 12% is good for one year. Okay? And that's the always the case that the interest rate is good for one year. Okay, so I hope that that is clear. Again, if you do have questions, please let me know. All right, so I hope nasusundan ako ha. So last example about interests. Ngayon naman po, no, hindi siya naka-daily. Let's uh, have it monthly or good for one year. So the company has an outstanding one year, no? 12% note payable dated August 16. So half month, no? kasi August 16. Then amounting to 200,000. The interest is payable again until the maturity of the note. Ito lang naman class, we are accruing because we are to pay it na matagal pa. Kung sinabi sa problem na babayaran agad yung interest, then we can compute it pero hindi siya papasok as adjusting entry since pag binayaran, automatically credit to cash yun. Okay, then the company year ends on December 31 ulit. Then the adjusting entry on December 31. So since naka uh, year naman to, no, not necessarily days, and August 16 is almost, if you count it, half of the month. So for August, it will be one half. September is one. October is one. November is one. And then December is one. So all in all, ang nakalipas is 4.5 months. So we can use the monthly approach. Now which can be different doon sa kanina since we are talking about days. Okay? Okay. So now let's compute no using the 4.5 months. So our adjusting entry now would be based on the 200,000 face value or the principal times the 12% na annual interest rate then times 4.5 months over 12 kasi good for 1 year nga interest rate so that would be equal to 9,000 pesos okay so debit interest expense 9,000 and credit interest payable 9,000 okay so i hope na nasundan na ninyo yung with regards to accrued interests po natin okay sir paano yan kung 2 years po yung nakalagay Yung promissory note ay babayaran after two years. So are we going to convert this 12 months into 24 months? No pa rin. Bakit? Kasi ang basis nga ng denominator natin is yung interest rate natin and the interest rate is actually again good for one year only. Okay? So good for one year lang. Kaya whether two years, three years, four years, the interest rate is good for one year. So that will serve as your uh, denominator, no? the number of months. Okay? So that's our example number four, again, related to interest. So I hope nasusundan niyo na ha, there is an expense being used and then hindi pa tayo bayad kaya tayo merong payable. Okay, so to continue, no, another example about accrued uh, expense. So nangyari naman, we have rents. Diba sometimes, no, um, if we are the um, nagre-renta, okay, so we are not yet paying our rents, Thus, on our part, if it is not yet paid at the end of the reporting period and it will be paid uh, the following month maybe, no, then we need to accrue. Okay, so in this problem, a rent totaling 80000 for the months of November and December has not been paid by December 31, 2021. So baka next year pa babayaran no? or naka-agreement si um, landlady, landlord, or si lessor, no? 
at saka tayo as lessee no to pay it no at a certain point in time okay so in this case since utang pa natin itong rentang to ang entry natin on December 31 2021 is 80,000. So debit rent expense 80,000 kasi for sure nagamit na natin yan on the month of November and December and then we credit rent payable 80,000. Or somehow no, ayun pala no, no um in some cases pag nakakita kayo ng term na word na accrued, let's say accrued rent, so that is also a payable. Okay, in this case. Okay, so this is to record unpaid rent. So clear po ba tayo doon? By the way, kung napansin niyo no, in the first four example, yung mga description doon ay computations. So sir, are we allowed to put computations as description? The answer is yes. Now, just like what I have shown in the first four examples, lahat yung computations. So you are allowed to put computations here. Just follow lang po no na ayaw ko makakita ng um, again yung saliwa-saliw computation at saka yung indent, pagkaka-indent i-follow pa rin even though it's computation. Now, If you don't want to put computations, then you can put as well the words description. So just like this, not to record unpaid rent. So you can do that. Either word description or computations are acceptable. Okay, dun lang sa dati kasi we have used words since no computations pa naman yung ginawa natin doon. Pero ngayon kasi in adjusting entries, we are prone to computations. That's why we can actually put computations already in our description. Okay, so are we clear on that? Um, last pala pa alala ko sa rent no. So sometimes yung binibigay sa inyo er, er, per month no. So ingat kayo pag per month kung ilan po yung months na hindi bayad, then yun po yung inyong uh, ko computen ha. Ito kasi total na total na na 80,000 good for November and December. Pag sinabing per month yung 80,000, so ang ia-adjust ninyo is good for 2 months. Kaya magiging what? Times 2 160,000. Tignan nyo maigi yung data ha. Again, naging 160,000 kasi ang inasum ko is per month yung 80,000. Pero kung yung original na inentryhan natin kanina, total ang sinabi, then we will still push through with our 80,000. Okay? So I hope na nasusundan ako ha. Again, if you do have questions, please let me know. So another example for accrued expense no, is about advertising. So we have already interest, salaries, um, rents, advertising naman. So the company received a bill on December 31 from Daily Inquirer for advertisements placed in the newspaper during the second week of November 2020. So may bill. As you all know, pag may bill, hindi pa naman necessarily bayad ka, di ba? So the bill is for 20,000 daw, so that's the amount, not yet paid until January 10. So, nagamit natin siya in the year 2020, specifically November. But since it is uh, not yet paid until January, then we need to adjust it as of the year end, which is December 31. So, hindi ba November natin i-date? Tapos na kasi yung November. So, we are now in the adjusting point that we haven't recorded it in November, kaya nire-record natin siya ng December since it occurs during the year naman. Okay, so again, in the concept of adjusting entry, the date should be the last day of the period. So that's December 31, 2020. Debit, advertising expense, 20,000. Kasi nagamit na natin yung service ng advertising. And then we credit advertising payable, 20,000. Or pwede rin accrued advertising, whatever is available in our chart of accounts. So, um... Our description no, is word here to record unpaid advertisements. Okay? So are we clear on that class? Sir, paano pag sinabing binayaran agad ng December 31? Ay, wala na tayo adjusting entry day. No, pag binayaran agad yan, then instead of payable, it will be credited to cash. Pero ayun na, hindi binayaran until January next year, kaya it will become a payable. Okay? So again, one nominal, which is the advertising expense, And one real, which is your advertising payable. Okay, so that's our um, example number six. Again, if you do have questions, please let me know. Okay, so I'm now going to proceed with my last example related to accrued expenditures, expenses, 
incurred, nagamit na, or nag-expired na, but not yet paid. So we have the last example na accrued utilities. So ngayon naman, utilities tayo. No? It's either Meralco, um, water bill, or telephone bills, and the likes. Okay? So the company received a Meralco bill. On January to 2021. Oh, tignan mo, January to niya na-receive. But this is related to the electricity worth 11,000 used for the month of December 2020. Oh, ito yung sinasabi natin kanina, no? Based on the definition of actual basis, we record it based on when it was being used. Kailan nagamit? Answer, December 2020. Kailan natin na-receive yung bill? January to. So, hindi pa siya nakarecord, di ba? In the month of December. Wala pa talagang trace ng recorded value there. So, wala sa trial balance. And then, dito, babayaran pa lang siya ng January 5, 2021. So, used in December, but not yet paid until January. So, kailangan talaga natin mag-adjust. Okay? Kailangan ba tayo nilang palagi mag-adjust? Oo. <laughs> Because that's how it works in adjusting entries. Okay? So, the date of our adjusting, of course, is the last day of December. So, 2020. So, debit tayo ng utilities expense dahil nagamit na natin yung electricity worth 11,000. And we credit utilities payable dahil hindi pa bayad 11,000. Okay, so our short description, words po tayo, electricity bill to be paid on January 2021. Or pwedeng receive Meralco bill. Kung na-receive sana yung Meralco bill ng, uh, within December, na-record siya or na-isama siya doon sa ating usual na entries at kasama rin dapat sa trial balance. Pero dito, medyo delayed talaga, di ba? That's the typical na nangyayari. For um, this month example, no the following month pa natin marireceive yung bill natin. Okay? So ganyan yung nangyari dito but do not worry. We need to apply the concept of accrual basis to record it when it is used. So that's December 2020. And we record it as expense or utilities expense, which is a re, uh, nominal account. And then we credit the utilities payable dahil hindi pa bayad a real account. Okay? So that's the concept of our accrued expense, expenses incurred but not yet paid. Again, if you do have questions, please let me know. So that's the first um, of the accruals no, cluster ng adjusting entry. We are now going to proceed with our last for this video lecture. We have accrued income naman or accrued revenues. So what are accrued income or accrued revenues? So accrued income are income no, that was already earned. So pag sinabi nating earned based on our definition kanina, it means it was already been what? Performed, di ba? If this is a service, the service have been performed already or the goods have been delivered. So, naibigay na natin, pero hindi pa natin nare-receive yung kapalit. No? So, we are not yet uh, paid or hindi pa natin nare-receive yung amount ng ating pre-provide na services or dinilivered na goods at the end of the reporting period. Okay? So, in this case, no, The adjustment would be services that have been performed but not yet billed or collected. So parang hawig din ito no? in our typical journal entry in Module 3. Naka-encounter na tayo actually nitong accrued income, di ba? Yung parang services on account or provided services on credit. Unfortunately nga po, no? dito, most likely hindi pa siya naisama doon sa recorded until ma-prepare yung trial balance. Okay, but we need to adjust it at the end of the reporting period because it relates to that period. Okay? So, we need it to present an accurate picture of the affairs of the business where we record immediately whatever is being earned during the period it was performed or delivered and recognize the income related to it para maisama siya sa income statement and also there will be a related balance sheet account. So kung kanina yung accrued expenditure ay may expense kasi na-incur at hindi bayad, may payable, ngayon naman po for accrued income, our pro forma entry would be debit receivable. So whatever type of receivable na um, mag-fit doon sa transaction na yon because we haven't received it yet kaya naging receivable. So parang kukulektahin pa lang natin kaya debit to receivable which is our real account. 
and then we credit the income or revenue account because we have already earned it. Okay, na earned mo na siya, na performed na or na deliver, but it is not yet paid or not yet received rather. Okay, and that income account is your nominal account. So, palagi kapag meron kang accrued income, no, ang partner was the receivable and income. Okay, so again, no, kung titignan mo yung perspective, yung accrued expense kanina, ikaw si user, ikaw yung gumamit. Ngayon naman, accrued income, ikaw yung nagbigay, ikaw yung nagpagamit, no, kung whatever services that you have performed, but you haven't received. So again, no, looking into the perspective ha, baka kasi mapag-interchange nyo yung accrued expense and accrued income. Magkaiba po sila. No? So tignan ninyo yung pagkakagamit ng word. Ikaw yung nag-perform at nag-deliver dito sa accrued income. At ikaw yung hindi nakareceive ng bayad. Okay? So I hope that that is clear ha. That's accrued income. So to give you examples, no? so I have prepared various um, example. So let's start with this one, accrued service income. So assume that the company performed 6,400 of services on account for the client in the last few days of April. So nag-perform tayo on account. Now, because it takes time to do the paperwork, they will build the client on the services ng May 2, 2021. Oh, nabil ng May 2. Pero kailan pinerform? April. Ang tanong, kailan dapat i-adjust? The necessary adjusting entry should be made on April 30 since it is related to the month of April. So si parang hawig din siya din sa services sa account. Kung sana lang na i-bill natin agad yung client during April, hindi na siya sasama sa adjusting entry. Pero ayun nga, medyo dahil nga ba daw maraming paperworks, na-delayed yung billing, edi um, even though it's delayed, we need to still uh, record that on April 30. Okay? So the adjusting entry on April 30, 2021 will just simply be debit. Accounts receivable 6,400. Okay, because we haven't uh, collected it yet. And then we credit the service income or service revenue, no? 6,400. So we can use a description here, perform services collectible in May or whether then sent bill to the clients. For as long as, again, it's dated April 30 since it was not yet recorded until the preparation of the trial balance natin. Okay, so the account receivable is your real account, then the service income will be your nominal account. Okay, so again, if you do have questions, please let me know on our respective chat boxes. So that's our first example. So next naman tayo, no? Accrued interest naman tayo, no? So kanina, in the accrued interest expense, so doon is tayo yung umutang. Tapos yung inutang natin, tumakbo yung interest. Ngayon naman po dito, no, of course, we are on the perspective nung kumikita. So tayo naman yung nagpautang, kaya meron tayong marireceive na interests. Now, a company receive a 120 day. So gaya kanina, this 120 day is your maturity. Di ba? Magmamature na ng 120 days yung ating promissory note, okay, which has an interest rate of 12%. Okay, so the 12% is again good for one year or annually. Sorry, pangat yung sulat ko, annually. Yan. Okay. Now, dated November 16, 2020. So yun yung start date, November 16, amounting to 300,000. The interest is receivable upon maturity. So makukolekta pa natin yun after 120 days. Now, the reporting period of the company ends on December 31. Okay, so just like what I have mentioned a while ago with regards to accrued expense, no, so itong accrued interest income natin, tumakbo yung interests, no, pero hindi pa natin nare-receive yung pera. Okay, kasi we will wait until 120. Actually, ang 120 days nyan, ilang buwan yan? Um, kung 30 days, apat na buwan, di ba? Kung November nagsimula, uh, December, January, February, March, up to March kalahate, no? up to March 15 maybe yung, yung due date niyan, so next year pa. Pero we need to record already up to December 31 kasi na-earned naman na natin. Now, gaano katagal? So as you can see here, no, uh, it is days, so from ilang days yan? From November 16, oh, Kailan ulit magsisimula yung counting? A day after, di ba? So we will start on November 17 up to November 30 lang yon, di ba? So ilang araw yan? 17, 18, 19, 20. 
Okay, so 4 days plus 10, and the 14 days in November, yung nakalipas. And then for December, we have an actual number of days na 31. So all in all, tumakbo na po yung interest natin ng 45 days. So meron na tayong na-earned na interest na 45 days. So in our adjusting entry, okay, so it will be the 300,000 principal times the annual interest rate. And then 45 days yung actual days na nakalipas. Dahil silent yung problem, anong gagamitin? Very good. no? You will be using the banker's rule which is 360 days. Kaya yung interest na hindi pa natin nakukulekta pero na-earned na natin was 4,500. So on December 31, 2020, ang entry natin is debit interest receivable because we are collecting it pa after 120 days. No? 4,500 and we credit interest income because we have earned the interest amounting to 4,500. Okay, so the interest receivable is the real account, which is an asset, and then your interest income is your what nominal account. Okay, so that's our accrued interest income. Again, ha, please make sure that you count properly the number of days, kung days yan, kung month, edi month. And then, again, check if this is 360 or 365 or we will be using 12 months. Okay, so that's for our example number 9. And actually, related din dito sa sample 9, yung example 10, which is related to an accrued interest income. But by this time, it is year naman. No? So, so that you can have a variation of how you will apply the computation. So a company received a one-year, no? one-year, 12% note. So the 12% is an annual rate or year, yearly rate. No, dated August 1, 2020. So that's the start date, August 1, amounting to 300,000. Interest is receivable upon maturity. So we will wait until after one year bago natin ma-receive yung ating interest. Now, the reporting period ends on December 31. Then the adjusting entry related to the accrual of interest. No? So since we are having from August up to December, Okay, from August to December, so ilang buwan yun? That is August, September, October, November, December, five months yung nakalipas. Okay, so kung five months yon, so here is the computation. 300,000 is the principal times the annual interest rate of 12% times the five months over 12. So that is 15,000. Okay, so 15,000 na po yung na-earn natin ng interest. So the entry would be Debit interest receivable, 15,000 to be collected pa after a certain number of months pang natitira all over, oh, sorry tuloy, credit, no? interest income or interest revenue, 15,000. So that's good for the interest ng five months na class. Ha? So I hope that that is clear. Again, if you do have questions, please let me know. Okay, so ito ang year end niya. It's December 31, ha? August nagsimula. Okay, so clear tayo doon. Alright, very good. No? Uh, tapikin mo yung sarili mo. Gising ka pa ba? Okay ka pa? Ayan. So, um, bago ko iwanan to, no? baka may gusto magtanong sa inyo, Sir, paano kung good for one month lang? Paano ko kukumputin? So, kung gusto mo malaman, magkano yung monthly interest? So, that will just be um, 300,000 times 12% times 1% over 12. Okay? Bakit 1 over 12, sir? Kasi 1 month lang naman yung gusto mong inaalam, di ba? So, kung 1 over 12 yan, so that would be, tignan natin, 300,000 times 0.12 times 1 divided by 12. So, every month, it will be amounting to 3,000 pesos. Eh, 5 months yung nakalipas, kaya 15,000. Okay? So, if you just want uh, monthly. Okay? So that's our example number 10. So I hope nasusundan niyo ako ha. And I have here now the last example. So this is now related to rent naman. So actually madami pang uri no pero um ayoko nang ibigay lahat dito but we can have additional discussion pag nag-discuss tayo ng no, ating mga activities in the class. Okay? So 
the company rented out one of its office space to a retailer on February 1, 2021. So nagparenta tayo and the company will collect the rent every fifth of the following month. So nagparenta tayo, nag-start ng February 1, pero ang singilan is the following uh, month pa, no? every fifth. So depende na rin yan sa usapan. Now assuming the month the monthly uh, rent, no? The monthly rent is 100 uh, sorry, 10,000. Monthly rent 10,000. The adjusting entry uh, to record the April uncollected rent is okay. So yung February, kailan na bayaran yung renta niyan kung hindi pa binayaran in advance? It was to be paid on March 5, ba? March 5. Ngayon, yung para doon sa buwan naman ng March, kailan ba bayaran? The 5th of the following month, which is April 5. Ngayon, yung para sa buwan ng April, kailan ba bayaran yan? Sa May pa. Okay? So May 5 pa mababayaran. So as of the end of April, yung para sa April month ay what? Utang pa. Okay? So assuming that the company reports monthly, no? naka-monthly accounting tayo, so ang kailangan nating i-adjust on April, uh, April 30, kasi hanggang 30 lang naman yung April, is yung babayaran natin on May 5. So that's only good for one month and the entry would be, hindi pala babayaran ha, kasi nasa perspective tayo nagpaparenta, tayo yung makakareceive. Okay? So, um, the entry on April 30, 2021 is debit rent receivable for the amount we are expecting to receive on May 5, amounting to 10,000. And we credit already the rent income since na provide na natin yung services ng rent on the month of April. That is 10,000. So I just put here the words description to record accrued rent for the month of April. Okay? So I hope that that is clear. Ha? So sometimes, tignan nyo rin yung problem. Baka mamaya, hindi lang pala isang buwan yung hindi pa nakukolekta. No? Dito kasi sa problem na to, isang buwan lang. Yung April pa lang. Pero in some other problems, maybe three months na hindi pa nakakapag-kolekta. So you need to accrue it. Good for three months, two months, or depende kung ilan yung sinabi sa problem. So read carefully. Okay? So that's our discussion of the introduction of... Um, adjusting entries, no? why we need adjusting entry to update and to adjust the balances and to make sure that our income, expense, assets, and liabilities accounts in our financial reports will be updated. No? And then um, we have discussed as well the two types of accrual uh, adjusting entry. We have the accrued expense, which are expenses, um, expenses incurred but not yet paid, and accrued revenues, no? which are income or income or revenues that have been earned but not yet collected. Okay? So that's it for this video lecture. I will just see you all on our next na lecture no, for the continuation of the adjusting entries. No? Marami pa tayong i-discuss. So I'll be waiting you there. So again, if you do have questions, please let me know on our respective chat boxes. Okay? So with that, I hope that you have learned something. Thank you very much. No? Kamsameda. Kapon ka. Sayonara. Bye-bye. Have a great day.